Hello everyone and welcome to my TCC 2020 virtual talk. So in this talk, I will present the security of time lock puzzles and timed commitments. So this is joint work with Jonathan Katz and Julian Loth. So here's the outline of my talk. Um, both time lock puzzles and timed commitments are topics in the area of timed cryptography. So I will first talk about what timed cryptography is. And our first contribution is to present an idealized model called the strong algebraic group model. And then we analyze a widely used time lock puzzle called the RSW assumption or the RSW puzzle in the strong AGM. And finally, we show how to construct timed commitments from a variant of RSW called decisional RSW. And along the way, we also present another primitive called um, timed public key encryption. So timed cryptography involves some tasks that take some prescribed time to compute. And importantly, there should be no parallel speed up. So you still need time t, even if you have access to a parallelized computer. Um, a classic topic in timed cryptography is timed encryption, which was introduced by this is uh, Rivest, Shamir, and Wagner in 1996. So what is the timed encryption? Recall that in the standard public key encryption, um, if you have the secret key, then you can decrypt fast. But if you don't have the secret key, then decryption would become infeasible. And in time encryption scheme, um, so if you, again, if you have secret key, then similar to public key encryption, you can still decrypt fast. But the difference is, even without the secret key, you can still decrypt. But this decryption process will take um, the prescribed time t to complete. So to be a little bit more formal, the encryption algorithm takes as input the public key and a message, and then outputs a ciphertext. So this is the same with standard public key encryption. But the decryption algorithm, there are two decryption algorithms. So the fast decryption algorithm takes um, the, the secret key and the ciphertext, and then outputs a message or uh, reject. And the slow decryption algorithm only takes the public key and the ciphertext, and it also outputs message or reject. And this slow decryption should take the prescribed time t. So as you can imagine, in time cryptography, you cannot rely on some classic assumptions, such as the hardness of discrete log, because they simply don't fit here. And instead, we need some problems with mild hardness, which can be solved in some prescribed time, but not any faster. And this is the so-called time lock puzzles. So the most well-known time lock puzzle is the RSW puzzle, again, um, proposed by the original RSW 1996 paper. So there's a fixed group, and given a random group element G, the task is to compute G to the power of 2 to T. So this is used in almost every timed cryptographic schemes up to now. Um, and in particular, it is the underlying assumption in the two well-known verifiable delay functions, which have uh, wide applications in many blockchain systems. So of course, if the group order is known, then you can compute G to 2 to T really fast because you can first compute the integer g as, uh, sorry, the integer z as 2 to t mod the group order. And then instead of computing g to 2 to t directly, you can compute uh, g to z by repeated squaring. So we need to use a group of unknown order. For example, we can use the quadratic residual group qrn, where n is the product of two large safe primes. So now, uh, repeated squaring should take time, uh, sorry, should take t sequential group operations to complete. And of course, the question is, 
whether you can solve this puzzle faster than T steps. So the ensemble assumption says that um, computing G to two to T in fewer than T steps is as hard as factoring N. And there's a, uh, there's a variant called the decisional ensemble assumption, which says that even distinguishing G to two to T and a random group element in fewer than T steps is still as hard as factoring N. So this is stronger than R sub -L. So we want to analyze the R sub assumption in an idealized model. And a natural candidate would be the algebraic group model proposed in uh, two years ago in 2018. So roughly speaking, uh, this AGM stands between the standard model and the general group model. And and a so-called algebraic algorithm, um, whenever it outputs a group element, it must also output its so-called algebraic representation, which is how the output can be expressed um, using existing group elements in the algorithm's view. So unfortunately, on an intuitive level, it is very easy to see that uh, the plain AGM is not good for use in our context. This is because the AGM has no notion of time or step. So an algebraic algorithm can just output G to 2 to T together with, with its representation, 2 to T, and that's it. So the algorithm helps in just one step. So to analyze the RSW assumption, we um, in this paper, we introduce a quantified version of the AGM, which is called the strong AGM. So the strong AGM is between the AGM and the general group model. So as you can see here, there's a spectrum of models. So um, at one end is the standard model, and at the other end is the general group model. So the AGM lies between the standard model and the general group model, and the strong AGM lies between the AGM and the general group model. So in the strong AGM, we require that the algorithm must output the entire path of computation. So concretely, if an algorithm outputs some, um, some group element Y uh, in a certain step, so it also needs to show how Y is computed using previously seen or previously output group elements and using basic operations so there are two types of basic operations. One is multiplication and the other is inverse. And importantly, um, we allow an algorithm to output multiple group elements in a single step. And this exactly models what a parallelized algorithm can do. So here's uh, an almost trivial example. Um, Given G can build uh, G to the power of eight in three steps. So this is the RSW puzzle uh, where T is three. So in the first step, um, in the first step, the algorithm only sees G. So it can only output uh, G square as G times G. And then in the second step, the algorithm can use both G and G square. So it can uh, output G to four as G square times G square. And then finally, in the third step, it can output the final output, uh, g to eight, as uh, g to four times g to four. So now we can show that um, the ensemble assumption holds in the strong AGM. So the proof is by a reduction which factorizes n. So say algorithm A is an ensemble solver. Um, when I output a group element X in step I, the reduction R can recursively compute an integer X such that uh, the group element output by I is this capital X is G to X. And by induction, we can easily show that um, this integer X is at most two to I. So now, if the algorithm A, the strongly algebraic algorithm A, computes G to 2 to T in 
less than uh, in fewer than t steps, then the reduction r um, correspondingly computes the integer x, which is strictly smaller than 2 to t. And this implies that 2 to t minus x is a non-zero multiple of the group order, the order of qrn. So now the reduction r of time is a non-zero multiple of uh, phi of n, and of course it can then factor n. So we also have a complementary result, which is it is impossible to prove the RSW assumption in the area. So these two results combined show a separate uh, a separation result between the AGM and the strong AGM. Okay, so encrypted with this ensemble assumption, we can now construct a timed encryption scheme, um, which is similar to ELGMA. So the public key is n, and the secret key is a factorization of n. So to encrypt, um, you first choose a random group element, and then um, you multiple this a uh, random group element, uh, sorry, uh, you, multiple, you multiple the random group element to the power of 2 to t with a message. So it is easy to see that um, this scheme is CPA secure under the decisional RSW assumption. But of course, it is not CCA secure because it is modelable. So then how to, um, how to construct a CCA secure timed public key encryption scheme? So one possible approach is to use an authenticated encryption scheme and a verifiable delay function. But the problem is it uses a random oracle. So without a random oracle, um, we can construct a CCA secure encryption, a timed encryption uh, using the null young paradigm. So recall that um, null young is a compiler from a CPA secure public key encryption scheme or CCA secure scheme. So it uses two, uh, two keys and it encrypts the message twice. And then it uses a simulation sound, now interactive zero knowledge proof to prove that these two ciphertexts correspond to the same plain text. So plugging in the previous CPA secure scheme, we obtain a CCA secure scheme as shown here. Um, we prove that this scheme is CCA secure under the decisional RSW assumption. So this proof is very similar to the original proof uh, by Noah and Neil. Uh, there are some subtleties, uh, subtleties here. So for example, the, re, uh, the reduction to the decisional RSW assumption must simulate the decryption oracle in a fast manner. And this requires uh, fast decryption which in turn requires fast verification of the NISIC. Okay, so our, uh, our next topic is non-interactive timed commitments. So this was first proposed by Bonnet and Noor in 2000. Um, in the NITC, there are four algorithms. The commitment algorithm takes as input a message and output um, a commitment, a commitment proof, and a decommitment proof. And secondly, the commitment verification algorithm takes a commitment and a commitment proof, and an output either accept or reject. And the decommitment verification algorithm takes a commitment, a message, and a decommitment proof. And again, it outputs either accept or reject. And finally, there is a forced decommitment scheme, which takes only the commitment and it outputs uh, the message or a rejection symbol. So both of the two verification algorithms uh, run in time fast, while the first decommitment algorithm takes prescribed time t to complete. But what does uh, all, all of these mean? So is a graphical illustration. Um, so the committer, the committer sends the commitment as well as the commitment proof to the receiver. So this is the commitment stage. And in this stage, the receiver 
can verify whether this commitment can be opened to the method uh, in time fast. And then in the decommitment stage, the commitment can send um, the message as well as the decommitment proof. And the receiver can again uh, verify whether this message is uh, valid or not, again, in time fast. And on the other hand, if the committer refuses to decommit, then the, uh, the receiver can still do the false decommitment algorithm based on the, commi uh, the commitment only to obtain the message. But this will type, uh, take time, uh, the prescribed time t to complete. So the security of timed commitment schemes, we have two security notions. So hiding means that what the, what the receiver sees in the commitment phase, which is the commitment and the commitment proof, they should reveal no information about the message. And we require uh, the non-malleability uh, property, which is uh, the commitment and the commitment proof should reveal no information about the message, even given access to the false decommitment oracle. And in the binding uh, property, the binding property says that first, it is infeasible to come up with a valid commitment and two pairs of messages and decommitment proofs such that the messages are different, but both of them are valid with respect to the commitment. And it should also be infeasible to come up with a fake decommitment proof. So given timed uh, public key encryption, a uh, CCA secure timed public key encryption scheme, we can uh, very straightforwardly construct a non-interactive timed commitment scheme. So we use um, two NASICs for two relations. So both of these relations uh, the ciphertext is encrypted correctly. The difference is whether the message is in the witness or in the instance. So to commit, you just encrypt the message along with uh, these two proofs that M is computed correctly. And um, to, for, for the commitment verification algorithm, you verify the first NISIC and for decommitment verification, you verify the second method. And finally, uh, for false decommitment algorithm, you just uh, decrypt and recover the message. So to, to summarize, um, this paper mainly has three contributions. So the first one is we proposed the strong AGM, which is a quantitative version of the AGM. And secondly, we analyze time lock puzzles in the strong AGM. So we present one of the first hardness results about the RSW assumption. And there's also a concurrent work in crypto this year, uh, analyzing the same assumption, but they are in the generic ring model. And finally, um, we construct non-interactive timed commitments. So as a building block, we first construct CCA secure timed public key encryption. And then we do a compiler from CCA secure public key encryption, uh, timed public key encryptions to non interactive timed commitments. So this is the end of my talk. Thank you very much. And our paper is on ePrint, so you can check it out if you are interested.